We offer our viewers a free subscription to the Prayer and Worship Guide, which contains the prayers for the Mass, scripture readings, and special seasonal prayers. For your free copy, order online at heartofthenation.org or call us toll-free at 1-855-855-MASS or write to Heart of the Nation, Post Office Box 14428, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53214. Your privacy is important to us, and we will not share your name or contact information with any other organization. If you're joining us through YouTube, please click the like button and consider subscribing to our channel. The Heart of the Nation Mass is a viewer-supported ministry. Please consider an offering today to support the Mass on TV and online. Thank you, and may God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fulfillment, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. So our gospel today asks us to think about what does it mean to be holy? What does it mean to do God's word? And so as we begin to uh, reflect on that and celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us first acknowledge our sins. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Now, Israel, hear the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe, that you may live and may enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. In your observance of the commandments of the Lord your God, which I enjoin upon you, you shall not add to what I command, nor subtract from it. Observe them carefully, for thus will you give evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations, who will hear all of these statutes and say, This great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has gods so close to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? Or what great nation has statutes and decrees that are as just as this whole law which I am setting before you today? The word of the Lord. Reading from the letter of St. James. Dearest brothers and sisters, all good giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no alteration or shadow caused by change. He willed to give us birth by the word of truth, that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you and is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word, not hearers only, deluding yourselves. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The Word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Pharisees, with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem, gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed, the purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and scribes questioned him, why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, Well did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts. You disregard God's commandment, but cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person, but the things that come out from within are what defile. From within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within. They defile. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So whenever we read from the letter of James, the second reading uh, today, I always like that letter because it's very practical. James is always very practical. He tells you, he tells you what, uh, what you should do. And he's telling us that the word is within us. And so that uh, with that word within us, we need to be doers of the word and not just listening to it. Otherwise, he says, you delude yourselves. You're fooling yourselves. Well, in the gospel... Jesus shows us a prime example of how that can happen. In other words, how people can delude themselves uh, by thinking that they are doing the word when they're not doing any such thing. And he, he targets, Jesus targets the fact that all of the things that they do are external. They're external things. They're washing their hands and washing cups and dishes and kettles and, and, and doing all this outward stuff that has nothing to do with what is going on inward. How do we follow that? How do we do the word and not just um, uh, delude ourselves by just doing a lot of stuff? We always like to do a lot of stuff. And the more stuff we do, sometimes we think, oh, I'm doing a really good job because I'm doing a lot of stuff. But Jesus doesn't really look at it that way doing stuff doing religious stuff uh, can begin in a very in a very good way it's a reflection of what is already inside we've already repented we've already changed we've already changed our heart and as evidence of that what we do um, kind of gives evidence of that but something can happen over many, many years and, and sometimes centuries, uh, people look at the outside things that people do with a changed heart and imitate just the things that they do. So in other words, the, um, uh, the, the, the acts themselves become uh, the same as being holy, the same as doing the word. But you can do all kinds of religious things you can even go to Mass, goodness, God forbid, without really having it in your heart. Maybe you go only because you have to. Um, and so it just becomes a, an external 
external act. There's a couple of dangers that happen when, when you only do things for the outside. First of all, it, it, it grabs our ego. Our ego is always wanting to look good in front of other people and always wants other people to say, oh boy, is, he, is she great? Is she holy? And that doesn't help us at all. Another thing it sometimes does is then we compare our little activities and work and things that we do and, and see someone else who maybe doesn't do it the same as we, and then we think we're better than they are, like the Pharisees in the, in the gospel reading. We wash our hands. Why don't you guys do the same? And so you have, you have comparisons, and that doesn't help us at all. And that's where Jesus always wanted to see the outside, what we do, as reflecting the inside of our hearts, the, the repentance and conversion that has happened. So how, do we, how can we be sure that we're, we're doing what, what Jesus asked for? Well, again, we go back to James, that, that practical apostle that wrote that letter. He said, if you want to be sure you are doing the word, Help people, help the afflicted, widows and orphans, those people who don't have anyone else to protect them. Be compassionate, serve the needs of the poor. Then, if we do that, we can all be sure that we are doing the word and that we are showing forth holiness. So let's profess our faith in the Apostles' Creed found on page 40 in your worship aid. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. We now open our hearts to ask our Father for what we truly need. For the church, that we may be doers of the word, putting our faith into action as we fulfill the mission Christ has left us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who defile, who defile our world through negative speech, that they may use words that build up, not tear down, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For students, teachers, administrators, and staff at the beginning of a new school year, that their commitment to the vocation of education may be rewarded by an atmosphere of fruitful learning, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially among our Heart of the Nation parish family, that they will soon be restored to good health, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, that they may come into God's kingdom of light, love, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs and prayers of all our Heart of the Nation parish members, including those joining us from the states of Nebraska and Wyoming, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we thank you for all you have given us, especially the gift of your word. Help us not to simply listen to it, but to do it. And hear these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray now, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice children for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for all souls of the May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they can become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and all of our bishops, all the clergy, and all of your faithful people. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on all of us, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. So now let's share with each other a sign of Christ's peace and peace to all at home. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth to glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. We offer our viewers a free subscription to the Prayer and Worship Guide, which contains the prayers for the Mass, Scripture readings, and special seasonal prayers. For your free copy, order online at heartofthenation.org or call us toll-free at 1-855-855-MASS or write to Heart of the Nation, Post Office Box 14428, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53214. Your privacy is important to us and we will not share your name or contact information with any other organization. If you're joining us through YouTube, please click the like button and consider subscribing to our channel. The Heart of the Nation Mass is a viewer-supported ministry. Please consider an offering today to support the Mass on TV and online. Thank you and may God bless you.